Before working with Grade 12 Euclidean geometry, you need to make sure that you understand and can work with the rules and theorems learnt in geometry so far. When you solve geometry problems, you need all the knowledge and theorems at your fingertips. Also, new theorems use results proved in previous theorems. Here is a quick list of important results you should know well. Angles. Angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. Adjacent angles on a straight line are supplementary. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Angles on parallel lines. We can use the letters of the word fun to remember these angles. F shows the corresponding angles are equal. U shows the co-interior angles are supplementary. N shows the alternate angles are equal. Triangles. Some of the triangles of a triangle is 180 degrees. The exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. Similar triangles. Two triangles are similar if their corresponding angles are equal. Congruent triangles. Two triangles are congruent if the corresponding angles are equal and the corresponding sides are equal. Properties of quadrilaterals. Trapezium. Kite. Parallelogram. Rectangle. Square. Circle theorems from grade 11. Chord theorems. The line drawn from the center of a circle and perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. Converse. The line drawn from the center of a circle that bisects a chord is perpendicular to the chord. The angle subtended by an arc at the center of the circle is double the size of the angle subtended by the same arc on the circle. Angle subtended by a chord of the circle on the same side of the chord are equal. Cyclic quadrilaterals. Tangents from the same point. Tangent chord theorem. All four vertices of a cyclic quadrilateral lie on the same circle. So ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral. The opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. An exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. Two tangents drawn to a circle from the same point outside the circle are the same length. And finally, the tan chord theorem, which states that the angle between the tangent to a circle and the chord drawn from a point of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. In addition to previous work in grade 12, you study and use the proportion theorem and its two converses and similarity theorems. Before we get into grade 12 proportion theorem, you need to understand ratios. A ratio allows you to make comparisons of the same type of quantities and has no units. In other words, a ratio compares quantities that are measured in the same units. Using ratios, we can compare heights, weight, and so on. A ratio does not tell you what the actual lengths or amounts are. For example, if there are 30 people in your class and 10 are boys and 20 are girls, then we can work out the ratio of boys to girls. The ratio is 10 boys to 20 girls and we write this as 10 to 20. We can divide both numbers by 10 to get a ratio of 1 to 2. 
Ratios can also be written in fraction form. In this case, we can write the ratio as 1 divided by 2 or a half. The ratio 1 to 2 does not mean that there are only three people in your class, one boy and two girls. Rather, it means that for every one boy, there are two girls. Proportion If two or more ratios are equal to each other, we say that they are in the same proportion. Proportionality describes the equality of ratios. When shapes are in proportion, the corresponding angles are equal and corresponding sides are in proportion. We say the shapes are similar. Example, using ratio and proportion to find an unknown length. Look at this example of two similar triangles XYZ and PQR. Find the length of the unknown side PR in the triangle PQR. Make sure you know which sides correspond to each other in the triangles XY corresponds to PQ and XZ corresponds to PR. YZ corresponds to QR, but we have no information about these sides, so we probably won't use them. Since the triangles are similar, the ratios of the corresponding sides are equal, so we can write xy divided by xz equals pq divided by pr. It's also correct to write xz divided by xy equals pr divided by pq. We know the lengths of xy, xz and pq, so we can substitute the given values in the equation. We get 10 divided by 15 equals 5 divided by PR. Simplify the fraction by dividing by 5. So we get 2 divided by 3 equals 5 divided by PR. We have a single fraction on each side of the equal sign, so we can use cross multiplication to simplify. 2 times PR equals 3 times 5. So 2 times PR equals 15, and dividing both sides by 2, we get PR equals 7, 5. So the length of PR equals 7, 5 centimetres. Now you can check that the ratio PQ over PR, which is equal to 5 over 7, 5 in the simplest form, is equal to 2 over 3. This is the same as the ratio of xy over xz. The proportion theorem describes how we can use knowledge about ratios in triangles, where one triangle is contained in another. The theorem states that if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides of the triangle, then the line divides these two sides proportionally. We can translate this theorem in a given triangle ABC as if DE is parallel to BC with D on AB and E on AC, then DE divides sides AB and AC in proportion. In other words, the ratio of AD to DB is equal to the ratio of AE to EC. Two other ratios can also be deduced. The ratio of AD to AB is equal to the ratio of AE to AC. And the ratio of DB to AB is equal to the ratio of EC to AC. To write the formal proof of this theorem, we start by stating what we will prove. This is called the statement of the theorem. We will prove that a line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides in proportion. Then we draw a sketch and show the information we have been given. We have triangle ABC with DE parallel to BC. 
what we need to prove is that DE intersects AB and AC in proportion. We can prove this by proving that AD divided by DB equals AE divided by EC. The proof uses the areas of triangles. To find the area of triangle ADE, we need to construct perpendicular lines to show the height of the triangle. Draw H1 from E perpendicular to AD. H1 is the one height of the triangle with AD as the base. Now draw H2 from D to the base AE. Finally join CD and BE. This creates new triangles C, D, E and B, D, E, which are needed for proof. Follow the steps of this proof carefully in the diagram. We use triangles A, D, E and B, D, E first. The base for the triangle A, D, E is A, D and the base for the triangle B, D, E is B, D. The triangles share the same perpendicular height H1. Remember that the area of a triangle is half times base multiplied by the perpendicular height. The ratio of the area of a triangle ADE to the area of triangle BDE equals half AD times H1 divided by half BD times H1. We can cancel half with half and H1 with H1, which leaves AD divided by BD. Now we do the same with the triangles ADE and CED. Use AE as the base of triangle ADE and CE as the base of triangle CDE. These triangles share the same perpendicular height in H2. Using AE as the base this time for triangle ADE, the area is half AE times H2. The area of triangle CDE is half CE times H2. Again, we can cancel the half and the H2 and we get AE divided by CE. Now we need a way to link the two ratios AD and DB and AE to CE to each other. We do this using the areas of triangles BDE and CDE. The areas of these two triangles are equal because they have the same base DE and lie between the same parallel lines, which means that their heights are equal. Look at the ratios of the areas that we have used in the proof so far. Since we have just seen that the areas of triangles BDE and CDE are equal, it follows that these two ratios are equal to each other. We have already proved that the first ratio equals AD divided by BD, and the second ratio equals AE divided by CE. Therefore, AD divided by DB equals AE divided by EC. In other words, in triangle ABC, DE is drawn parallel to BC and it intersects AB and AC proportionally. Similarly, if you are asked to prove that these other ratios are equal, you would need to make your constructions on triangle ABC and choose to work with triangles that will lead to the ratios that need to be proved equal. The proof will follow the same steps.